Remember when the internet was supposed to spread freedom and democracy around the world? It's helped people organize, protest, and fight for democratic reforms. But increasingly, authoritarian regimes are using the internet to undermine democracy by monitoring citizens, silencing critics, or just simply cutting the cord altogether. In fact, according to one study, the number of internet shutdowns has doubled since 2016, and more than 70% of internet users now live in countries where people were arrested for posting political, social, or religious content. And when it comes to controlling the internet, experts say there's one country that's leading the way and teaching others how to do it. China. It's, it's basically pioneered and just dominated this form of kind of internet control. And you look at it and you go, OK, we can do that. Let's try that. It's not too difficult to see, to track the trend in Beijing's influence and Beijing's training and all these forms of internet control that China pioneered appearing in Africa. For two decades, China has been building its own version of the internet, sealed off by the Great Firewall, which blocks, censors and controls anything that the ruling party doesn't like. And now, China's trying to export its model of the internet around the world. Beijing calls this cyber sovereignty, something President Xi Jinping promotes to other leaders at China's annual World Internet Conference. They kind of crafted this doctrine of, chi of cyber sovereignty. It says, look, just as we control what goes on inside the physical borders of our country, we should be able to control absolutely what goes on in the you know, cyber borders of our country. It's basically using sovereignty arguments and national security arguments as a justification for censorship. China isn't just spreading its ideology, it's also sharing its technology. Companies with links to the ruling party like Huawei are building internet infrastructure in countries all over the world, particularly in Africa. Experts believe that this could give those nations the same surveillance powers that China has. There are lots of places that you can see this investment and then see this, uh, you know, this spike in censorship. China has also trained leaders from nearly 40 different nations on its surveillance tactics, including Uganda after its 2016 elections. In the wake of that election, um, when the government was complaining about people, how people had organized on social media and explaining why it had to you know, shut down social media for people's own good, um, some Ugandan officials did go to Beijing and openly said, we are going to Beijing to learn how to deal with this problem with the internet. Come in the wake of cracking down on dissent in Uganda, you know, I think it was pretty clear what they were hoping to learn from, from Beijing. There are two competing models of the internet. One is China's, the other is more open and decentralized. But right now, it looks like China's is making serious progress. That's partly because the open model has so many problems of its own, from fake news and political hackings to real-world violence. China is able to say these aren't really problems in China because we tightly control our internet and we tightly police them. If countries that care about the internet and if companies that care about the internet and organizations don't come up with a effective new model, then you know I think we will see a trend towards a more top-down government control as in China, as in Russia, as in much of Africa. You know, we'll see that even in countries that have typically, you know, stuck up for a free internet.